Chapter 2. Wrecked. It's snowing the afternoon we get the next call from Meemaw. It's the kind of snow we like best down here. Big and wet and so light it piles up half a foot in an hour. All the trees look like they're wearing mittens. It's a guaranteed snow day tomorrow at school, which I'm banking on. Since I haven't studied one minute for my science exam, this is not a good start, Mom says when she sees me in the kitchen, getting out the mixing bowls from the bottom shelf and lining the counter with flour and sticks of butter. But she doesn't stop me. I'm aiming to make a fruit galette with peaches we froze last summer from the farmer's market. I saw the galette in an old copy of Food and Wine someone left in the guidance counselor's office next to the copies of Parents Magazine and Guideposts. The galette looks nice, homey and fancy both, like a big fruit tart dusted with glittery sugar. I'm elbows deep in floppy pie crust when the phone rings. Mom is on the couch, surrounded by piles of blue books. The English exam through yesterday, and she's buried in essays. She uses a purple pen because it's supposed to be more encouraging than red. I say an F is an F, no matter the color. Mom! She doesn't look up. Mom, phone! What? Oh! She digs for the phone which she finds wedged between the couch cushions. She checks the screen and sighs. Meemaw, I say. Meemaw. She takes it in the other room, and I fold up my ball of dough in plastic wrap like a present and stick it in the fridge. My arms are already tired from the kneading. For the zillionth time, I wish I could stand and stretch. Because she's not here to yell at me, I settle for cracking my neck in the, that way Mom hates. Ten minutes later and I'm sprinkling sugar over a bowl of cut peaches when she walks in. What? What? Why do you look like that, I say, dusting the crumbles off my fingertips. Like what? Like you've been hit by a bus and then backed over again. It's your grandfather. I grab a towel to wipe my hands and roll over to where she's plopped on the couch. The blue books go sliding. What now? She leans over to pick them up, but then she just kind of stays there and puts her head on her knees. He's in the hospital. Oh, boy. I try to swallow, but there's a lump of panic in there that makes me cough. This must have been a bad one. What happened? He drove into Food & Co. What do you mean, into? I mean, he drove the truck through the glass front windows of the grocery store. Against my will, I picture his weathered hands on the wheel and see shattered glass and tires spinning. I feel dizzy. When I was younger, he would hold me up so I could practice standing. He was always so steady. Something inside me topples over, and I wrap my arms around my stomach to hold myself together. I thought Meemaw hid the keys. She did. He found them. I put a hand on her back. It's knobby like mine. I can feel every bump on her spine. She aims her words at the ground and they fall heavy. They're keeping him overnight in the hospital. Apparently the airbag did some damage, abrasions to his face, your grandma said. He also fractured his nose. Oh boy. We eat the peach galette for dinner. It's a little soggy in the middle, but neither one of us cares. I don't think mom even knows she's eating. Afterwards, she takes her exams with her to her bedroom. She works best when she's stressed. I don't. I spin in circles, literally. I spent half an hour doing laps around the living room in my chair, trying to keep my body busy so my mind stops spinning. It doesn't work. Grandpa's hurt. Meemaw's scared. Mom's sad. It all sticks like gum, and I can't pull out of it. So I give up and head down the hallway. I should go to bed now. Or study. Probably should study, but my head's too crowded. I pick up my phone, sneak into the bathroom, and lock the door. I dial area code 918 and wait. Hiya, honey. Hiya. It doesn't bother me when Meemaw calls me honey. That's what grandmothers are supposed to do. It's a grandmotherly word. How's things? Meemaw asks like we're just shooting the breeze. Really? What? You want to hear about my day? I say. Well, I don't want to talk about things here. Honey, this place they've got your grandfather is a morgue. It smells like baby wipes and cigarette smoke. Lord, the amount of smoking that goes on outside this hospital by nurses and doctors, mind you, makes you wonder all over again at the state of our health care. 
but you don't want to talk about it? No, I don't. I can hear how tired she is. It travels down the line ahead of her words, and I want to reach across the miles and hold her hand. I watch the snow still falling outside and curling up all fluffy on the window sill like a cat. We sit together in quiet. I want someone to take my hand, too. How'd Nero go? She said finally. Good. I'm off the meds. Well, praise the Lord and pass the potatoes. Your mother must be through the roof. She cried. Of course she did. Her baby's in the clear. She cried about you tonight. Well, she's a crier. I don't tell her I want to cry, too. Mima, how are you, really? There's a long enough pause that I have to stop and check the phone for a signal. Oh, honey, you're a child. You shouldn't be worrying about this. Shit is for suckers, Mima. You're the one who told me that. Tell me, really. Should is for suckers. I stand by that. But this kind of truth isn't for young years. It kills me when she defaults to my kid status because she's one of the only people who treats me like an adult. But I know Meemaw in her own tailspin of worry, just like I am. So I stay quiet, waiting it out until she starts talking again. Baby, your grandpa's just about done me in this time. He's okay, but I hate looking at him laid out in this hospital bed. And there it is again. Another picture in my head I never wanted. Grandpa on a white bed, under white sheets and white lights, looking like a shell of himself. All those age spots from too much sun mixing with the bruises. I wipe my nose on my sleeve and clear my throat. I heard he found the keys. Yeah, I hid them in the pantry, but he got turned around going to the bathroom and found them. I hear beeping in the background. It's steady, which seems good. And then a man's voice muffled. Honey, look, the doctor's just come in and I've got to go. You go get some rest now. I'll see you in a week. Christmas, baby girl. She hangs up first. I stare out the window over the bathtub and try to see the snow instead of the pictures in my head. What you imagine is always worse. It's got to be. Because if it's not, if all the bandages and brokenness I see when I close my eyes are true, then I can't think how a person ever fully heals after that. Will he know my name when he sees me? Will he still look like my grandpa? I turn to study myself in the mirror. Whenever I grumble about the freckles on my nose, Mom says I have him to thank. I tilt my head in the light. Brownish hair, blue eyes that are sometimes green depending on the sky, and all those freckles that I will never complain about again. I look down at my chair. That's the first thing people see anyway. I had a pink sparkly one when I was little, but this one's black with purple racing stripes I stuck on to jazz it up. There's really not much in between. You get either my little pony or the kind you see old people wheeled around in at the airport. Will Grandpa go home in one of those? I hit the lights and roll down the hall into my room, a Pepto pink from floor to ceiling that was awesome at eight. When I picked it out, it makes me want to vomit now. I don't bother with pajamas, just heave myself out of my chair and into bed, which is harder without mom's help, but I don't want to bug her. I try to let sleep take me, but my legs are doing that twitching thing they do when my muscles get stiff and I'm restless. Every time I close my eyes, I see grandpa's busted face and I twitch. Mom looks terrible the next morning. If she did sleep, it doesn't show. She sits at the kitchen table and picks at the fake wood that's flaking around its edge. It is not a nice table. Nothing in this place really is. We just like it because it's cheap and doesn't have stairs. I hand her the orange I was peeling and grab another one. She takes it and we stare at the TV. The map of the middle of the state is whited out. The weatherman says I was right. Almost every county is out of school. But the snow's already melting and it's more gray than white from the grit off the road. We need to talk, Mom says real slow like she's about to tell me I'm adopted or something. Yep, I say trying to keep it light even though I feel fear as hard as a peach pit about whatever's coming next. I'm worried about your grandfather. Yep, Ellie, be serious. I'm also worried about me, Ma. She says not to. You called her? It's a statement, not a question, so I nod. 
So you think we shouldn't worry, she asks. But I can tell she's really just talking to herself. I think Meemaw's never going to admit how bad it is, I say, and put down my orange. I can't get the peel started right, and it's coming off in tiny pieces. Mom sucks on an orange slice. She looks weirdly better. Relieved, maybe? She stands and grabs bowls and frosted flakes from the cupboard, then pours the cereal in without milk. We always eat our cereal dry. An old habit that's hung around from my early years. When I was allergic to just about everything, including dairy. They say it's normal for kids like me who were born super early to have allergies. I say no, it's still weird, but weird is my normal. After a minute or so of crunching that's louder than the TV, she says, what would you say to making our Christmas vacation a little bit longer? I want to yell yes, because extra time with my grandparents always feels like a second dessert. Maybe this will be enough to really help Grandpa, but I'm trying to keep it cool. So I ask as calm as I can be, how much longer? The spring semester? For real? For real. So I can quit school? Dreams really do come true. She raises an eyebrow at me. She can do this. Her eyebrows are like cartoon characters. No, you can transfer to the middle school. Oh, new school? New people who get to stare at the new kid in the wheelchair? The cereal turns to sawdust in my throat. If a kid can't talk well, I've seen parents hang a sign on the wheelchair that says, Hi, my name is blank, and I have blank, and my favorite color is blank. It's like a Cliff's Note version of a person. Maybe I'll pretend I can't talk at the new school and do that. Nobody'd know the difference. Would you teach at the high school? I called this morning. There's nothing available, but they'll have me on as a substitute. Do I have to finish my exams? You mean start your exams? Yeah. Yes, you have to start and finish, and then we leave. Brakes squeak outside. The neighbor in our duplex is heading off to who knows where. Every week he pulls in with a new delivery sign on his car. This week, it's the Snappy Tomato. I wonder if he'll give us a free pizza. I think of who I'll eat lunch with at this new school when I can't sit with Emma Claire. Probably no one. Meemaw's never going to go for this. That's why we don't tell her until we're there. So lie? I try to raise my eyebrow as high as Mom's, but can't quite make it. No, not lie, delay the inevitable. So stall. She takes both of our bowls to the sink. Yes, stall. I like it. The counselor's office looks like an ad for PBS Kids. There's a painting on the wall of a face with a nose on the forehead and eyes where ears should be. Every angle I try, it won't come out right. The room itself is all bright pastel, if that's even a thing purple and peach and green everywhere, and a little lamp with a peach shade. It's like 90s Barbie came, became a school counselor, but Mrs. Lawrence is nice and always remembers to move the chair so I can roll right in. She's sitting behind her desk while Lauren and the special ed coordinator, Mrs. Hayes, sits on the couch along one wall and Mom stands next to me by the door. Fast exits are key. We understand your special circumstances, Miss Cohen, and we are sorry to lose Ellie halfway through the school year, but our job today is to make sure we have a competent assessment of her current needs to send on to her new school in... Miss Hay looks down at her notes. Her purple glasses hang on the tip of her nose, and I wait for them to topple off, but they don't. Oklahoma, Mom says. Yes, Oklahoma. Now Mrs. Hayes looks at Lauren, and I have to shut my mouth so I don't actually sigh out loud. What are your observations, Miss Osborne? Well, Lauren says from the depths of her turtleneck, I think given Ellie's history, I would recommend her continuing with an aide at her new school. We all know by history, she means medical history, the thing I can't outrun. Several palsy is like the go-to-jail card in Monopoly. No matter where you are, it always shoots you back to zero. In my case, that's birth Day one of CP. Nobody knows what went wrong, exactly. Mom's water broke at the 4th of July picnic right as she was taking a bite of egg salad. How much less prepared could you be if you're eating a sandwich in the middle of a field when you go into labor? You can't blame her, though. 
She was supposed to have three more months before I showed up. It happens to a lot of really early babies, I guess. This cerebral palsy that left me different from everybody else. The brain just isn't ready to protect itself from the bumps and bruises of the outside world. It's like a snail that hasn't grown its shell. The doctors may not know what caused it, but they know what it does to me. It makes it so I can't move my body like I want. It's like everything is both weaker and heavier at the same time. Like your legs gone numb. And you know, if you could just shake the pins and needles out, then you could get up and walk it off. Or at least that's what I imagine, when I imagine standing and walking on my own. It's not as bad as it was in the beginning, though. I couldn't eat or even breathe without help at first. I stayed with all the other tiny sick babies in intensive care for weeks and weeks. Mom thinks it's luck and a blessing that I came home on what was supposed to be my actual birth date. We celebrate both every year. The day I was born and the day I came home. But what Mrs. Hayes is writing down now and what Mrs. Lawrence is nodding along to, thanks to Lauren's brilliant input, is that I'm still a baby. Never mind that I worked with a physical therapist to get strong enough to wheel my own chair. Never mind that the feeding therapist let me graduate when I could eat and drink on my own without dribbling food down my front or choking on it. Never mind all that. Just one mention of the history and I'm back to square one. I nudge mom with my elbow. She can't let them put that on my record and stick me with an aide at my new school. I give her the say something look and she does. She looks at all of those ladies in the, that room and says, I think that's a wise decision. We do not talk all the way home. We do not talk over a dinner of cheese toast and milk and shriveled grapes which are the last things in our fridge before we leave tomorrow. We do not talk until it's in the middle of the night, and I have to yell from the bathroom for her to bring me toilet paper because there's none on the roll. She's waiting for me in the hall when I come out. How could you? Ellie, listen. Why should I listen to you when you never listen to me? Honey, I know you don't want an aid, but... Of course I don't want an aid. I don't want an aid because I don't need an aid. I bump up against the wall with my wheel in a way that mom hates because it leaves scuff marks. She kneels down in front of me so we're eye to eye. I stop moving. Ellie, we don't know what this new school is like. We don't know how equipped they are to handle you. To handle me? Mom rocks back and sits on her heels and now I'm looking down at all the tiny lines around her eyes. Yes, Ellie, handle you. I'm sorry if that sounds harsh or demeaning but it is my job to protect you. It is my job to make sure you are safe and looked after, even if you don't like it. I want to cry, but that would be babyish, right? It's not fair. No, it's not. None of this is. She waves her arms toward the front door where our suitcases are waiting. But we're all going to look out for one another, okay? You, me, Mima, and Grandpa. I know I should tell Mom how scared I am to start at a new school, that it's just not about the aid. What if I don't make a single friend? What if I'm just the crippled kid all over again? I'm scared about moving in with my grandparents too. What if grandpa gets worse, or Meemaw says she doesn't want our help, and we've already quit our whole lives to move there? But I look at mom, and man, she looks tired. Like she could curl up and sleep right here on the floor. So I just say, okay and roll back to my almost empty room.